and welcome to Here Tutoring. In this video series, we're going to fly through pretty much every math concept you will need to know for the ACT and SAT. The purpose of these videos is to help you figure out quickly which math concepts you already understand and which ones you need to brush up on. It's not meant to provide a detailed treatment of any one concept. As we go through these first several concepts, if you understand a concept, great. If you don't, write it down as a concept you need to study more on for later. So, buckle your seatbelt and get ready because we're going to cover a lot of ground really quickly now. Okay, here we go. Concept number one. Definitions of integer, rational number, irrational number, prime number, imaginary number, and undefined. First, integers are whole numbers, including negative numbers and zero. Examples of integers are negative two, zero, three, and seven. Second, a rational number is a number that can be expressed as a decimal or a fraction. Examples of rational numbers are negative 0.45 and 3 fourths. Third, an irrational number is a number that cannot be expressed as a fraction or a decimal. Examples of irrational numbers are root 2, root 3, and pi. Fourth, a prime number is a number whose only factors are 1 and itself. A note to keep in mind is that 1 is not a prime number. Examples of prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, and 13. Fifth, an imaginary number is a number that is used with the square roots of negative numbers. A rule is that i squared equals negative 1. For example, the square root of negative 1 would equal i. Sixth, undefined refers to an expression that has a denominator of 0. For example, the function a plus b over x minus c is undefined when x equals c. Concept number two, order of operations or PEMDAS. PEMDAS stands for parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. This is the order that you do math in an expression. One thing to keep in mind is that multiplication and division go together and just depend on which one is further left in the expression. And addition and subtraction also go together and just depend on which one is further left in the expression. Here's an example of how to apply PEMDAS. In the expression, five minus four squared divided by parentheses 10 minus two parentheses plus three times six, we would do the parentheses or the 10 minus two equals eight first, which gives us five minus four squared divided by eight plus three times six. Next, we do the exponent, or four squared equals 16, which gives us five minus 16 divided by eight plus three times six. Next, we do the division since it is further left than the multiplication. So we do 16 divided by eight equals two, which results in five minus two plus three times six. Next, we do the multiplication at the right, or three times six equals 18. They give us five minus two plus 18. Next, we do subtraction, which is further left than the addition. So we do five minus two equals three, which results in three plus 18. Finally, we do addition. So we do three plus 18 equals 21. Concept number three, adding and subtracting negative numbers. To add a positive and a negative, there are three steps. First, ignore the signs. Second, subtract the smaller number from the larger number. Third, add the sign from the larger number. If the larger number is positive, then the answer will be positive. And if the larger number is negative, then the answer will be negative. For example, if we have negative 38 plus 25, our first step is to ignore the signs, so we have just 38 and 25. Second, we subtract the smaller number from the larger number to get 38 minus 25 equals 13. Third, the larger number 38 is negative, so we add a negative sign to our answer. So our answer is negative 13. To subtract negative numbers, simply recognize that subtracting a negative number is the same as adding a positive number. For example, 13 minus negative 23 is equal to 13 plus 23, which equals 36. Concept number four, multiplying and dividing with negative numbers. To multiply and divide with negative numbers, there are two steps. First, ignore the signs and do the problem without signs. Second, if there is an odd number of negative signs, the answer will be negative. And if there is an even number of negative signs, or zero negative signs, then the answer will be positive. For example, let's take a look at negative three times negative five times negative two. Step one, when we ignore the signs and do the problem without signs, we get three times five times two equals 30. Step two, here we have three negative signs, which is odd, so our answer is going to be negative. So our final answer is negative 30. Concept number five, divisibility. A number is divisible by two if the last digit is even. For example, 36 is divisible by two because the last digit is six, which is even. Next, a number is divisible by three if the sum of the digits is divisible by three. For example, 357 is divisible by three because the sum of the digits, or three plus five plus seven, equals 15, which is divisible by three. 
Next, a number is divisible by 4 if the last two digits are divisible by 4. For example, 524 is divisible by 4 because the last two digits are 24, which is divisible by 4. Next, a number is divisible by 5 if the last digit is 5 or 0. For example, 55 is divisible by 5 because the last digit is 5. Next, a number is divisible by 9 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 9. For example, 396 is divisible by 9 because the sum of the digits is 3 plus 9 plus 6 equals 18, and 18 is divisible by 9. Finally, a number is divisible by 10 if the last digit is 0. For example, 730 is divisible by 10 because the last digit is 0. Concept number 7. Remainder. The remainder is the whole number left over after division. For example, 14 divided by 4 is equal to 3 with a remainder of 2. Concept number 8. Absolute value. Absolute value is the positive value of a number unless the number is 0. For example, the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. And the absolute value of 4 times negative 5 plus 13 is equal to the absolute value of negative 20 plus 13, which is equal to the absolute value of negative 7, which is equal to 7. Concept number 9. The number of integers from one number to another number. To find this value, we subtract the two numbers and then add 1 to include the first number. For example, the number of integers from 12 to 25 is equal to 25 minus 12 plus 1, which is equal to 13 plus 1, which is equal to 14. Concept number 10. Finding a particular digit in a repeating decimal. To do this, there are three steps. Step 1. What number digit are you trying to find? Step 2. How many digits are repeating? And step 3. Find the multiple of your answer to number 2 that is closest to the digit you're trying to find, and then count up or down to find the digit you're trying to find. For example, let's say we're looking for the 101st digit of 6 divided by 11. Step 1. We're looking for the 101st digit. Step 2. 6 divided by 11 is 0.5454 repeating, so two digits are repeating. Step 3. The digit of every multiple of 2 is 4, so the 100th digit is going to be 4. Therefore, the 101st digit will be 5. Concept number 11. Adding or subtracting matrices. To add or subtract matrices, simply add or subtract the spaces that correspond to each other. For example, to add these two matrices, the top left will be 1 plus 1 equals 2, the top right would be 2 plus 5 equals 7, the bottom left would be 3 plus 2 equals 5, and the bottom right would be 4 plus 0 equals 4. Concept number 12. Finding the mean or average. The average or mean is the sum of all the numbers divided by the number of numbers. For example, the average of the numbers 12, 15, 19, and 22 will be 12 plus 15 plus 19 plus 22, all divided by 4, which equals 17. Concept number 13. The trick to finding the average of evenly spaced numbers. To do this, just average the smallest and largest numbers. For example, what is the average of all the even numbers from 12 to 36? Since these numbers are evenly spaced, we can simply do 12 plus 36 divided by 2, which will equal 24. Concept number 14. The trick to finding a number that will bring an average up. There are two steps to doing this. Step 1. Multiply the final average by the total number of terms, including the number you are adding. Step 2. Subtract the numbers you were already given. For example, Jim's average score after four tests is 88. What score on the fifth test would bring Jim's average up to exactly 90? To do this, we first do 90 times 5. 5 is the total number of scores, including the added score. 90 times 5 equals 450. Second, we do 450 minus 88 times 4, since 88 was the average of the four original scores. We end up with 98, which is our answer. Concept number 14, factors and multiples. A factor is a number that divides into an integer with no remainder. For example, the factors of 20 are 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. A multiple is a number you get by multiplying a number by positive integers. For example, Multiples of 6 are 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, and 36. Concept number 15, prime factorization. Prime factorization is when you keep breaking a number into factors until all the factors are prime. For example, the prime factorization of 48 might look like this. 48 equals 12 times 4, 12 equals 3 times 4, and the 4 on the right equals 2 times 2. Finally, the 4 on the left also equals 2 times 2. So we end up with 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 for our prime factorization of 48. Okay, we're going to stop here for now. Watch our next video to review the next several math concepts. We hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching, and I will see you there.